One of your best friends in the whole research process is going to be Google Scholar. Now, if you're not familiar with Google Scholar, you should try to become familiar with Google Scholar because uh, Google Scholar is a very powerful way to find a lot of research, and most people are already familiar with Google as a whole, and so using Google Scholar is not too much of a stretch. Now, it's located at scholar.google.com, or if you just Google for Google Scholar, you'll find it that way as well. Now, before we start searching for our, our theories, rhetoric, uncertainty, reduction, and cultivation theory, what we want to do first is make Google customize our usage of Google Scholar. So as you see here, I start off and I'm just looking at Google Scholar without having signed in or anything. Now, if you have a Google account, and you probably should because you're an ASU student, the first thing you should do is sign in. Now, I'm signing in with my Gmail account just because that's what's most closely associated with Google Scholar for me because it has been for years, but your ASU account should work just fine. A couple things that you should be checking first. Uh, one thing I'll note, it, note real, real fast is that there are a bunch of things here that are not going to be on yours. So my citations, my updates, this is all something specific to me as a scholar. And so I can customize Google Scholar even further. And so it, it tracks my citations and things. Don't worry about that for now. You know, it's not important. What is important, however, is making sure that Google is associated with the Arizona State Library. So what we're going to do is click on Settings first. Then you'll see off to the left here, there's Library Links. When we click on that, what we want to go ahead and add is a link to the Arizona State Library. So obviously I've done this already. When we search for it, you'll see this little box comes up. Go ahead and click the box and save your settings. Now the reason why that's important is because then Google will pretend as if you're on the ASU campus. Now if you're already on the ASU campus, there's no need to do this because it already recognizes that you're associated with ASU. But if you're working from home, this is an important step. This shows all of the articles as being able to be accessed directly from Google Scholar to go straight to the library website. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a moment. So let's start by searching for rhetoric. So when we search for rhetoric, it brings back 1.15 million results. So obviously this is a giant topic and there's way too much going on here. So as I've said before, I recommend narrowing down on something more manageable. So we'll do rhetoric and digital media. So there are all sorts of articles available for rhetoric and digital media. So what we're going to do is take one particular article and it also narrowed it down to 71,000 results. Oh, this is so much more manageable. But even then, it's, it's a pretty unruly topic. And so we'd have to want to uh, define it even further. But if we're just looking for a few articles, one of the things that Google will do was rank order these in terms of what it believes are going to be the most important. So for example, we're going to click on this Zappin article because I'm familiar with it. Now I can tell you straight away since I've read it, it's a theory piece. So it wouldn't fit for a coding sheet or for your literature review. But it's a good first start for just getting familiar with how Google Scholar works. So as you can see, there are these get it at ASU buttons all over the place. Now in some cases, PDFs like here and here and down here and even on this Zappin article are available from other means. But if we want to make sure that we're getting this most specific and most accurate PDF, one of the best things we can do is to go through the library website. This Get It at ASU link is going to do exactly that for us. When I click on it, what it does is it brings up what looks like a link from the ASU libraries, and that's exactly what it is. You'll notice that Communication and Mass Media Complete is listed here. If I click on Get Article, it will take me directly to where the article is located. But because I need to sign in, it will oftentimes ask me to do that first. So I've already signed in elsewhere, so I'm good to go. But you may need to add in your ASU ID before you go forward. Now here it brings us to the library website, and we're ready to go. This should look familiar because this is exactly communication and mass media complete. You can see it right here. So it's accessing the database directly. But you're using Google Scholar to find the piece. So we can click on full text. And there we are. There's the article. Now, if we don't want to do it this way, we can go back here a little ways, go back to Google. If we want to go back to Google Scholar, we can also search for our other articles or other theories. So uncertainty reduction. And one of the helpful things about Google Scholar is that it's going to search for everything pertaining to the theory, not just in the umbrella of communication and mass media complete. 
Now the reason why that's important is because in some cases we're going to be able to find things that are not under communication mask media complete. There are some cases where certain theories, especially objective theories and interpersonal theories, intersect with other disciplines like psychology. As a consequence, it's good to be able to search outside of all the communication journals. So for example, if we had five articles that we've found from communica communication journals, but we wanted to add one more from a psychology journal, that would be acceptable under my rubric. And so go ahead and do that. But here we are looking for uncertainty reduction, and we found a bunch of different articles that are out here. And so you can see, again, the Get It at ASU button is located all up and down. We have all sorts of different options. But here's an article that I can tell you coming from Management Communication Quarterly. This is an article that, or a journal that I've mentioned before. Now, strange as it would seem, Management Communication Quarterly is not listed under Communication and Mass Media Complete. And so here we'd have to find other means of getting to it. And if I click on either one of these Get Article links, I'll be able to get to the actual PDF of it. So that's an example of how this might work in terms of finding other types of theory information, other research, where it might not be housed in Communication and Mass Media Complete. Same thing's true here with Cultivation Theory. If I look up Cultivation Theory, I can find all sorts of different articles about Cultivation Theory. And some of them will be housed within Communication Mass Media Complete, certainly a Communication Research will, and General of Communication will, but others won't. So for example, this Singarelli piece out of Youth and Society is another type of piece that's not going to be listed under Communication and Mass Media Complete. So if we want to be able to use this piece, we'd have to find it through, again, Google Scholar, not using Communication Mass Media Complete. My recommendation is to start with Communication and Mass Media Complete and then go to Google Scholar as a secondary uh, source to try to find more articles. Now, one last thing I wanted to mention, because I think Google Scholar is helpful in this way. Google Scholar will also create citations for you. And so if you look right under here, you'll see a button for Cite. Now, I can tell you that Google Scholar is very good at creating APA citations, but it's not perfect. And so as I look at this particular citation that it's creating for this Potter piece, a couple things, under the APA at least, a couple things are wrong. Now first, it's missing the DOI number. And the DOI number is going to be important under the APA 6th edition, which is what we're operating from. And the DOI number is a digital object identifier, and that basically is a long number that should be listed at the very end. Ideally, what in time, we'll be able to just search for those numbers, and the article will come up directly. The other thing that's wrong with this citation, I can tell you, is this, the issue number. It's not necessary to have an issue number in APA formatting, and that's especially true because of the page numbers. APA recognizes that uh, page numbers increase, and so a volume two or volume three will actually start on page like 200 or 300, roughly. As a consequence, you don't need to know the issue number, because you can tell that if this article starts on page 564, it's going to be in a later issue. And so APA actually omits those issues or the issue numbers. And so as a consequence, if you added this into your citation, into the box for your coding sheets, you'd be close, but not quite accurate. And so you want to make sure that you're double checking those. Plus, it's always a good idea to just be familiar with the citation formats. And so if I have a quiz or you know, uh, an activity where I ask you to make a citation or fix citations, that you should be able to do that using APA formatting. Well, like I said, that's Google Scholar for you, and Google Scholar is going to be a very helpful source for you, and I recommend using it frequently to fill out your literature reviews, especially after you've you know, invested a lot of time in communication and mass media complete, and you're just looking for additional sources. On the whole, I find Google Scholar to be exceptionally helpful. I use it all the time as a scholar, and so I recommend that you should too.